Welcome to Ciao Bella, hosted by me, Erica Firpo, a travel journalist based in Rome. Each episode of Ciao Bella, I sit down with Italy's creators, contemporary artists and artisans, designers, culinary experts, heritage brands, and innovative estites, and more who are defining and redefining 21st century Italy. Pull up a chair and join in. You're listening to Travel Bites, a tasty conversation about a local treat. Hello, welcome to Travel Bites. This is Erica, and within my Ciao Bella podcast, I'm going to have a little bit of fun and bring you a taste of what I like to eat. And I'm so excited because today, for my very first Travel Bite, I have Monica Cesarato. Ciao, Monica. Ciao, Ciao carissima. Ciao. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I'm okay, actually. The sun is shining, so everything is fine, let's say. <laughs> Where are you? Uh, I am actually outside of Venice. I'm uh, on the Riviera del Brenta, where we got a beautiful Palladian villas. I'm not in a villa, even though I wish I was, but I'm lucky enough to have a little garden, so life is okay. It could be worse, could be worse. So just to give everybody a little recap, we are in Italy, and right now all of us are staying at home. So one yep. of the reasons why I'm having a lot of fun with this, this particular version of my podcast is because I'm calling people and we're going to be talking about my favorite things to eat. And one of my favorite things to eat is so directly related to you, Monica, because mm -hmm. you are a guide in Venice, one of my favorite tour guides in Venice, should I Thank dare you. say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and one one of the, the the tours that I know you do is a Cicchetti tour, correct? Yes, I do Cicchetti tour. I write about food and I also do cooking classes. So I, let's say I'm uh, all full concentrated. <laughs> about all the time and, and I think, she gets, she and I think this is why we get why we get along <laughs> <laughs> let's say I was I was actually one of the first one if not uh probably the second one to start to do Chiquetti tours back in the days when nobody knew what Chiquetis were so yeah I'm, well let's uh, let's tell a little bit about Chiquetti and I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell people um I'm I'm just gonna give a little backstory of mine yes, it was a long time ago I lived in Venice and um, a long time ago. And um, my friend Frederick, who is, I think, probably one of the directors of Save Venice, he was a young man then too. And we didn't have a lot of money. So we would meet up. This is, we ate for like five euro every day. That was our oh. budget. And we just ate on Cicchetti. And what that was a long time ago, though, was it? <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was a long time ago. It was at the turn of the century, dare I say. <laughs> yes, okay. So that, so I literally, I, I ate, I probably ate bacala every single day of my life. But why don't you explain to everybody what chiquetti, what that means, what it is? Okay, let's start from the word, because I know everybody wonders first how to pronounce it. So it's chiquetti, it's not cicetti, okay, because ch in Italian is k, so it's chiquetti. And the word comes actually from Latin, from chicus, that means small, because they are actually are very small bites to eat. Similar, not the same, similar to tapas, but they are smaller and just different, okay, the great things about Cicchetti is that uh, they're different in every osteria, in every bar, in every li little back row you go to. They're never the same. So there are some basic ones that are the classical ones, like bacala mantecato, a mousse of a cream, a dry cod. You have a sardine sour, sweet and sour sardines. Um, but then every osteria makes its own versions of different things. And it's that's what's very nice. And they must always, must, uh, this is a must, must be taken with a glass of wine, a small glass of wine that we call ombra. Ah, and that I didn't yeah. know. Ombra. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't know about, oh, okay. Ombra, that in Italian means shadow, because the Venetians, back in the old days, and we're talking about a long time ago, used to stand in Sermar Square selling the wine to keep it cool, they used to move the stalls with the shade of a church tower. The way the Venetians used to say, andiamo a bere all'ombra del campanile. Let's go and drink in the shade of a church tower. As the years went by, as languages usually do, the words got shortened, and it became, andiamo a bere un'ombra. Let's go and drink a shade. 
and uh, and usually it is a house wine, cheap but wonderful house wine, red or white. That's all you get to pick generally. I had okay. no idea about that. That is that is pretty great. So so that's, yeah, that's why I'm your favorite tour guide in Venice. <laughs> And I might even say someone I love getting cocktails with. <laughs> we talk about that after. We <laughs> so tell me, I you know I'm I'll, I'm going to tell you one of my favorite experiences getting chiquetti was that I was by myself and I was really hungry. So as I told you, I, I had this five euro budget, mm -hmm. and that's how I ate pretty much. I ate like once a day. I think I had a cappuccino in the morning and then chiquetti in the afternoon, mm -hmm. and. The worst experience I had was was I once went and I wasn't I must have been really hungry and I wasn't paying attention mm -hmm. and I thought I thought that I had I thought that I, I don't even think I spoke I think I just indicated for mm -hmm. what I thought was bacala mm -hmm. so I get my little kind of cracker my little bruschetta or whatever because mm -hmm. um, I I would call it a little bruschetta but it's really not um, yeah no it's always like more like a crostino but yeah it doesn't it doesn't yes. matter. Yeah. No, it does because it's Venetian, and I so I so I'm given what I think is bacala, not paying attention. So again, bacala is this milky, creamy cod. I yeah, we know milk. We know milk, though. Okay. Milk. Okay. You, I'll tell you later the recipe if you want. <laughs> but quickly. Yeah, definitely, please. So I put the whole thing in my mouth. Now you're gonna think I'm so dumb, but remember, I was hungry. I wasn't yeah. paying attention. I put the whole thing in my mouth, and I start crying. <laughs> Wow. It, it was really, it was gorgonzola cheese and I had no, <laughs> you don't like gorgonzola? It's not that I don't like it. I just don't but like, you were, I mean, but you were expecting, the I, was, I was expecting bacala and it was gorgonzola. And I literally, I closed my mouth and I, you know, you know, when you're, you have a whole bite in your mouth and you're like trying to delicately chew yeah. a massive piece. Yeah start crying and everybody they, they were like oh the, they're like the little girl is crying <laughs> yes i know the feeling it happens to me sometimes you know when there are some chick they, they try some new chiquetti and there is one thing i don't like i know i'm not very italian for that but i do not like anchovies okay uh, i do like oh. them fresh but not the thin ones okay i just i'm sorry it's something i can't stand and so you know whenever you get some uh, and we say oh yeah yeah and i go like do they have anchovies and they go no 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 don't worry and then of course it's full of it <laughs> and you go and you put in your mouth and you go oh no right okay so i know the feeling you poor girl you poor thing <laughs> So I bet after that you ate a lot of bacala. Yeah, that's I can't I can't stop. I can't stop eating bacala. So why don't you tell me? So there's no milk in the bacala. Yeah, you no, tell no, me no, a no. Okay, so let, let's clear something out first. The bacala in Veneto, so not just Veni, Venice, but just the, all the regions of Veneto, it is dry cod, not salt cod. Dry cod is totally different from salt cod. Uh, it is uh, um, far, uh, well, farm, let's say not farmers, yeah, because they don't have that many uh, cods anymore in, in the world anyway. But let's say it uh, comes from Norway. Uh, we in Veneto, we hold, I think, 80% of the export from uh, uh, Lofoten. It's a small little archipelago of islands there where they put the cod to dry in the open air for six months. So it's not preserved with salt. So uh, it dries up with its own uh, salt from the, from the air of the sea, okay? So when we we usually buy tons of it, we, we've been doing since the 1400s, we buy tons of it. What you do is you take a slab of cod, you actually soak it for at least three days, changing the water frequently to rehydrate it. Once it's ready to be cooked, you boil it, until it's white, then you drain it, remove the skin, remove the bones, and then you beat it really hard, like when you make mayonnaise, adding just oil and garlic. Simple as that. And you do that for about an hour and a half. No oh. milk. Or you can go to... <laughs> Oh yeah, and just ask for that. That sounds beautiful. It sounds a little daunting. So, or you can just meet up with Monica. <laughs> yeah, and my cooking classes, and we do it in the cooking class. Simple oh. as that. Yeah, but, or, or or even better, you could do a bacala marathon and go from one bacala or from one osteria to another and try all the best bacalas because, of course, each osteria says he's got the best. 
and uh, I got my own favorites, but uh, <laughs> you know, so you know, everybody says that they got uh, the best one. Where is your favorite, by the way? What's your what? Are, what are your top favorite? Um, Places? And, by, and, by, and by the way, bakaro, um, bakaro, do you want to tell everybody what a bakaro is? Okay, bakaro, well, okay, it is a small little osteria, it's a small little place where you generally just standing up. Now you can sit down because, of course, we got modernized. But back in the old days, where you walked in, you ordered an ombra, a small glass of wine with a chiquetto or two standing up, and then you walked away. Uh Allegedly, because uh, the story of the word baccaro has got different uh, roots, and we're not really sure. Let's say the one that I like the most is the idea that it comes from the word bacchus, the god of wine, because, of course, it's relating to <laughs> the fact that they sell so much wine. My favorite ones, I got two. Well, one uh, you had the pleasure of enjoying it with me as well. It's uh, El Sbarlefo. They are uh, near, uh, at the end of Strada Nova, that is the main, one of the main streets of uh, Venice. And they do amazing. Uh, personally, I think it's probably the best place for uh, uh, Bacala Mantecato as a Baccaro. I love it because uh, it's uh, constant. It's always as good every time. And um, I and there they also do the famous drink that I introduced you to, the Cinico, that is a new drink in town. Ah, yes. Yes. Yeah. That is a concoction, a cocktail of prosecco, lime, mint, and cinnamon liquor. And why is it called the Cinico? Uh, it's actually Cinico is the name of a liquor that is produced in Padova. Ah. Fun in, yeah, funny enough, uh, I recently discovered I thought they sold all over Italy. Well, they actually don't. They're very uh, is known in northern Italy, but let's say as soon as you go down towards uh, south past Ravenna, nobody already knows what it is because they just very, it's a small company, very small production. So if you ever come to Venice and you manage to get hold of a bottle, do it because they do not sell anywhere else but outside of our region. So it's quite particular. I like that. Mm. Yeah. And, and another little place I like is actually one of the historic ones. Okay. I personally never go to the historic ones near Rialto because, uh, well, there are so many guidebooks, so I kind of stay away. They are amazing, they're great, but I tend to go in the, uh, let's say, quieter part of Venice. So my other one is uh, near the ghetto. It's called Aziende Agricole. I know for sure they've been there for more than 50 years. They know for sure they've been there for longer than that, but uh, they don't have the records of it. So they know that whoever sold the place at a Baccaro before them, and uh, even before that, it was a Baccaro. So I reckon they've been there for about 200 years, but we, we're not 100% sure on the date. And they do this amazing meatball with uh, butternut squash, bacon, cheese, potato mashed together and then deep fried amazing that sounds incredible and you got to drink it with a glass of raboso wine that is a uh, naturally sparkling it's not a sparkling wine it's naturally uh, let's say fizzy wine from the veneto and friuli region that is simply amazing it's so delicious and uh, really really good and it's a wine that all the men in venice drink you know, spe speaking of which, um, and that's called Rabozo. Yeah, Rabozo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. spe speaking of speaking of um, the Venetians, I, you know, one of the things that people ask me, they they ask me about when when I've like about Venice. Do do Venetians actually go to the Bacchetti? Um, oh, of course. And you know, what what time would they go? Are they going all day long? Is it just like a, you know? When I, when I, <laughs> okay, let, 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 let's define there are two categories of Venetians. So the new generation, those that work, a lot of that, we used to because right now I'm not sure how it's going to be. But let's say those that work, generally, you go after work. So it's more like an well, in the rest of Italy, you do as an aperitif. We do a round of bakery. So you start at about six-ish, you go maybe to two or three, and then eventually you go home and have dinner. But then there is the older generation, the, you know, the veterans, the old guys, and they start at 11 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night. 
<laughs> so I, by the end of a day, they've been drinking like 10 or 15 glasses of wine, and I'm not kidding. I think I could get down with that. I think I have to try to be the older generation. <laughs> Uh, they are, um, and you know what? You meet them at uh, like seven, eight o'clock, and I got loads of them. Ah, oh, are you worried? Whatever. And they are not even slightly tipsy. Not even slightly tipsy. Unbelievable. But, but we know that Venetians and, you know, the Veneti, they're, they're, they're strong people. Uh, Very yeah. strong. I think it's in our DNA. I think if they ever take blood out of us, wine comes out and no blood. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. So I, I have I have two more questions for you, and um, one is that when I when I also lived in Venice, I was introduced to the spritz, and um, mm. I know that there you know my friends and I we'd always meet for a spritz in the afternoon. But um, can you tell everybody what the difference is, I guess, between meeting for a spritz and getting chiquetti? Oh, okay. The spritz is a fairly new thing. The chiquetti has been going on for like, uh, bah, since uh, uh, more or less Venice became Venice. So we're talking about at least eight, nine hundred years, if no more. The spritz is something relatively new, as in it was developed, it was invented, let's say, by the Venetians during the Austrian occupation in the 1800s, and it was simply water and wine, uh, because spritzen in Austrian means uh, uh, to dilute, okay? And the, the Austrians couldn't drink our wines, they said they were a bit too strong, so they used to dilute <laughs> it with water. And then in the, towards the end of the 1990s, beginning of the 2000, a local Venetian, uh, mixed with this spritz, uh, select, that is a Venetian herbal made orange cocktail drink uh, from the 1920s and created this new cocktail. And all of a sudden, all the Venetians were back on the streets, all happy, they had a happy hour, uh, time and everything. Pretty soon, Apro Campari caught on the idea. They had enough money to go and go worldwide with a, you know, with an international marketing campaign. And now everybody knows the Apro of the Campari spritz. Let's say that a true Venetian would generally have it with Select or Chinar, that is a artichoke-based drink. Uh, but you know, everybody will have a an Aperol or Campari. It depends how sweet or sour, you know, it depends on, or bitter, sorry, uh, your uh, preferences are. But yes, now you can have a Cicchetti with a, with a spritz. Let's say it will be always be better to have it with some wine. I'm personally more of a wine person than a spritz person. I, I agree. I feel like the Cicchetti, I stand up, I have my glass of wine, I eat all the Cicchetti I can. My spritz, I'll sit down with crisps. Yeah, yes, with chips. Ex yeah. Ex exactly yeah. with chips. Now, yeah. my, my last question for you is something I read this morning. So mm -hmm. we are all, as, as I was saying, we're all at home. Venice mm -hmm. is very quiet. Every, every mm -hmm. place is very quiet. And I read that there are fish, that people are now <laughs> noticing fish in the canals of Venice. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm so glad you asked me this question because I'm trying to write every, everywhere is fake news. Okay. It's not fake news about the fish, but I would like to clarify two things. First, the fish was there before. It's always been there. Okay. It's just because the water was very muddy because of the continuous movement of the motorboats and of the gondolas and of the vaporetto. Okay. Obviously, the water, because uh, Venice is built on a lagoon, so it's sand underneath, it was always muddy, always sandy, so you couldn't see them. But the fish were always there. What's happening now? After three weeks now, because uh, we've been, uh, you know, Italy's been now 10 days, but Venice went on all lockdown way before that, okay? So, uh there are no boats going around. There are no gondolas going around. So everything is still. The sand settled down and now you can see clearly. And I would wow. like to say there are no dolphins in the canal. Because <laughs> even everywhere, we have got dolphins. Yes, in the lagoon. They're always been there, but in the open lagoon and every so often. And it was also a problem sometimes for the fishermen because, of course, uh, you know, when they go fish, they, they, but they're always been there. They will never come inside because it's too shallow. The canals are only five feet. So, you know, where would you put that? How would a dolphin go from five feet? You know, so yeah. no dolphins. All right. OK, good, because I was worried. <laughs> No, I keep seeing pictures. I keep seeing the big headlines, and I'm like, oh, God, oh gosh. I, and I, I see people. If you don't see me retweeting and telling you about it, don't you think that maybe it's not news? So, uh, 
you know. Hey, that's that's a great point. Everybody, I want to I want to let you know how you can find Monica. So Monica, um, she Monica, why don't you tell us about your website, Twitter, Instagram, how we can find? Oh my you. God. Okay, so uh, me personally, as a, as a blogger and a guide, you find me on www.monicacesarato. Dot com. Uh, you find me again as Monica Cesarato on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook. If you want for my cooking classes, you find me as Cook in Venice, so www.cookinvenice.com, and then Cook in Venice in every single uh, other social media, so either Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So for my listeners, if you want to catch up with that, I'm also going to be sharing this on my my blog on chowbella.co. I'll have a page dedicated to this awesome travel vibe with Monica and everything that she has just told you will be listed so you can click through and find her. Monica, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, you know, uh, we I think uh, between my Zumba classes, yoga thingy and uh, whatever, I, and you know, the flash mobs online at the moment, I think we are all very busy. I'm actually busier than I was before. <laughs> I feel like no. the same thing. I'm a little bit more social than I was ever before. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just hope, honestly, I honestly hope to see everybody back, not just in Venice, all over Italy soon i know it will will not be soon enough but uh we are here waiting for everybody to come back simple as that we're looking forward to seeing you thank you so much for your time thank you ciao ciao thanks for listening to this week's episode of ciao bella if you'd like to know more about today's guest, please visit ciaobella.co and click on the podcast link or go directly to ciaobella.co backslash podcast. Want more Italy? You can find all my episodes on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher. When you have time, subscribe to iTunes and rate the podcast. What are you waiting for? And if you want to be part of the podcast, email me or DM me your Italy questions. To learn more about me and my work, go to my website, ericafirpo.com, and follow my Italy adventures on Instagram at ericafirpo. Ciao, bella! And a very big thank you and hug to Massimiliano Yonta and Dis to Dis Studios, the producers of Ciao, Bella, who continue to make me sound and feel great. <laughs> <laughs>